So, our next speaker is Andrea Spies, Hotel Bravo 9, Bravo Lima Alpha. You know him from, uh, from YouTube. And he is a very, very successful channel with uh, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of subscribers. 400,000 400, subscribers. So, he's a YouTube superstar. And uh, <laughs> we are far away from that. We have about 4,300 something subscribers. Um, so, yeah, he's my great role model. <laughs> okay, Andy, the stage is yours. Okay. Cool, thank you. Now on YouTube, I'm the guy with a Swiss accent, <laughs> and it has a reason for the American friends particularly. <laughs> I have a strong accent, but I try my best. So my topic is SDR, what's next, basically in the, in the environment of, uh, of the ham radio community. And uh, I will start with what we, where we stand. And everything is very personal, of course. The next is possible next steps. And the third one, which is inc incredibly important in my point of view, is communication and collaboration. Because when I started my uh, SDR adventure, I had a hard time to find different things. And I'm still sure that I do not know 20% of what is available. I learn every day new, really in interesting things. So I think this is are probably a very important topic. So let's start with um, where, we do, where we stand in hardware. We saw it already before. You all know uh, these, uh, these tools already. So uh, RTL-SDR is uh, the, the most important thing. It's, it's the entry level for most, uh, for most people. Most people start SDR with an RTL-SDR uh, dongle. Then uh, we I mean, this is low level, but then we get also already quite reasonable hardware, for example, HackRF, uh, HackRF or uh, also Kraken now, uh, stuff like that. Uh, so are interesting uh, mid-level hardware. And uh, the excellent hardware is getting cheaper. And we have one example here down in the, in the booth. I, I strongly advise to, to visit uh, the booth of Aronia, and uh, they, they are very, very capable, and they just released a really high-end high SDR uh, receiver plus an ex excellent software uh, for ham, ham uh, radio operators. It's not cheap, but it's, it's extremely cheap compared to uh, what it was uh, four years or five years ago. And uh, cheap transmitting capability is still some sort of a problem. I mean, the Pluto is able, the, the HackRF is, is capable, but then it's, it's a little bit uh, more, uh, more difficult. The Raspberry Pi became the de facto standard in, in low-level SDR uh, applications. Uh, I think also the, S, the, the um, Raspberry Pi is similar to the RTL SDR. It's, it's available, it's well known. People, it's, it's at a low, yeah, <laughs> not now, but uh, we all have one or two of them uh, somewhere in, in our drawers. Anyway, um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a low entry level, and I think this is I incredibly important because SDR is complicated in itself, and it was extremely complicated to, to start, but it gets now a little bit easier. And we will see later also why I think this is. Linux and Windows for the rest. I think Windows still holds up in, in this area, so we have a divided world there. And most new ham radios, as it was mentioned before, they are, they are SDR, SDR uh, uh, equipment. Now, uh, from a software point of view, software is available for all sorts of receivers and tra transmitters. We have plenty of uh, software available. We can choose which front end or whatever we, can, we, we want to use. Most is fortunately open source. And uh, 
There is even specialized software available for niches. I just mentioned here something you, you might not, uh, not know. It's, uh, it's RTLS433, uh, which is used to hack uh, all the sensors around your house. So uh, a very interesting project. You can, you can hack the tire pressure sensors of your car and everything. It's a good entry point for many people to start with, uh, to, to, to uh, experience uh, the, the capabilities of SDR. And then there are software collections available, which make it a bit easier uh, to, to, use, to use SDR. I mentioned one here, Dragon OS. I think this is a very capable person behind it, uh, it's an American uh, colleague of us. And uh, he assembled a whole, a whole distribution. You just uh, put it on your PC, and uh, you, can, you can do a lot, a lot of stuff pre-installed. And he, he adds all the time new things. Then uh, some of the commercial software offers also uh, provide at least APIs, open APIs, which can be used. I mentioned uh, Flex Radio as one of the pro promin prominent uh, um, closed source softwares. But uh, we get now many, many uh, add-ons, basically, which are also supported by, by the Flex Radio Corporation, uh, and which are very useful, for example, FD8, uh, as an example, um, uh, which, which uses the APIs. Now we come to the, to the possible steps, and also here is just a few examples what I think could be interesting from a user's perspective. The first thing is, and I built large enterprise resource planning software for my living. I had to feed my children, so uh, that was a, <laughs> a good way to do it. And there we had the word use case. And I think this is very important in all kinds of, uh, of, of, of software. And I would focus on some of the use cases I think could be interesting. For example, interface um, analysis. These days, this is still a relatively manual process and in itself extremely time consuming. And sometimes also not very successful because things are very short, uh, very short and broad. When I was young, I was in military responsible for 500 kilohertz. 24 hours we turned up and down and the antennas were not turnable back then. They are heading to the east back then. And uh, our, our, our topic was just to discover uh, Morse code from, from, from the eastern maneuvers uh, 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 from, from the army, from the Russian army. So uh, then the next is band monitoring where we could add, and you still, we'll see it later on also, more intelligence, more uh, per, per, uh, uh, artificial intelligence, or st stuff like that. I think also in the transceiver area, we could do more. Most of the projects I see today is on, re on, receiving, on the receiving end. But uh, because we have a license, of course, we would also <laughs> like to, to transmit. And uh, then uh, the one thing you know quite well because you support it is uh, Great Scott gadgets, um, universal radio test equipment. I think SDR stuff is perfectly fitted for to create um, equi test equipment which was not available for, for, for us in, uh, in, in, in the past. I mean, we get now some things like VNA, uh, nano VNA, and stuff like that, which, was, which is mind-boggling for me as an old guy, from $50,000 to $150, uh, <laughs> and, and they are still usable for our, uh, for our hobby. And then, uh, for example, one thing could be antenna pattern me measurement with, uh, with a drone and a small SDR, plus a lot of software, of course, behind it. Would be, it would be cool if I could just uh, uh, let a, a drone fly around my, my, uh, my antenna and would know the real, uh, the re my, the real uh, transmission pattern. 
And particularly in shortwave, this is not so easy. I mean, in microwave, it's relatively easy. You don't need a drone there, at least. And then direction finding, I think this is also an extremely interesting thing where Kraken now started and so on. I think there is also, maybe also with, uh, with, with some of the first topics. And then this is one focus on use cases, and the other is to combine SDR technology with higher level of software. Because for me, the hardware, then the software, is the low-level software, for me, is more or less okay. The, 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 the receivers, the algorithms, and so on, are here. We can now go one step higher, in my opinion. For example, I come also from, from, the, from the networking, from the uh, IoT area, and so on, and there, we could use our channels with new protocols, like net mesh networks and stuff like that. Me a mesh network on RF, for me, would be a very interesting thing. And uh, this would be then basically combination, one level, one level higher. These um, protocols are already here. They are available, they are defined. They are sometimes, for example, Thread is open source, so we can use it, we can depend on it. But our channels are very special. They have very special needs, and their software-defined radio um, could... This would be a match made in heaven, in my opinion. Then, of course, uh, was also mentioned uh, the skimmers with AI because I, I saw, I think in the afternoon we will have a presentation in this direction. I think this is also something which is in the, in the verge of, of being possible these days. And I mean, we all use ChatGTP. I always thought machine learning is a nice thing, but when I first got an answer in perfect German, not English, in perfect German, I was really, really, really astonished that this is possible. And I think here we will have a lot of, a lot of um, capabilities or possibilities coming up. And we built now more and more s networks of monitoring stations. I mentioned something which is not SDR in, in, in the core, but I'm a balloon hunter, a weather balloon hunter. And we have now a global network where we have thousands and thousands of different receivers connected into one network. And if you are interested in any weather balloons in the world where they are flying currently, you get this information with one click. They are, by the way, in my, in my receiver, three SDR dongles in parallel in the Raspberry Pi 4 on my roof for 6 megahertz continuous monitoring. And the other, the other project I mentioned, these were all made by, for, uh, by young people, not by old guys like me. They were all young people. And uh, a 16-year-old started um, a rocket, um, a satellite, and a few, a few colleagues said, we have to track it. And then uh, they started to build up a, a, a project which is now called Tiny GS. It has 600 or more um, base stations, for sure more than NASA and SpaceX together, <laughs> around the whole globe. And we, 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 we monitor LoRa satellites. And this LoRa stuff is, is mind-boggling. I mean, I have a, 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 a ground plane for 70 centimeters on my roof, not more, and I get signals with 500 milliamp, uh, milliwatt from 2,000 kilometers away. And this is already very, very low in, in, in the orbit, so I have a lot of atmosphere in between. It's, it's mind-boggling. And I mean, this is an Arduino. <laughs> the, whole, the whole satellite costs $100. Okay, but also here we have a network around the globe and is connected. My receiver is switched from Madrid to the next available satellite across my, uh, my, my, my sky. It's remotely switched and it has, by the way, 
transmitting capabilities already built in. If you have a ham radio license, they could also use it, use it to, to, to transmit. So we could already build with a, such a network, we could build relays in, in, the, in the orbit and stuff like that for, for, for nothing, for no money. Hardware, I think front end of uh, simple receivers, amplifiers on the transmitters side, also with filters and so on, bridges for VNA stuff could be something. Then something which is very interesting, the microcontrollers get more powerful. We have really good stuff for 20, 30, 40 uh, dollars and uh, they can do audio. They, they could do a lot of SDR stuff there. And now I come to the most important thing, in my opinion, is the collaboration and communication. GitHub, of course, is, is for, for, for the code. I do not support any project in ham radio which are not documented on GitHub. I mean, GitHub, GitLab, whatever, I just mean it as a, as a, um, as a, as a placeholder. But we have to be open not behind DARC firewalls or whatever. In Switzerland, I'm a member of the executive committee. We have a decision. Everything which is supported by our uh, ham radio organization is open source, either text or code. But this is not sufficient. Then we find information on personal homepages of, of enthusiasts and so on. We get newsletters, and uh, one I he heavily uh, recommend, and uh, I think it's well known to you guys because it's, it's made from one of your uh, colleagues, it's Zero Retries. He, he focuses on these new technologies, not only SDR, but, but, but also, also SDR. And uh, I'm sure there are many others like that. YouTube channels, if I have a problem, I always go to YouTube. If my wife has a problem, I advise first go to YouTube. And it usually works. Events like this here are extremely important and if they are transmitted to, uh, to, uh, to the internet, it's even, even better. Clubs and organizations, for example, our friends from ARTC, I don't know if they are well known, but they they have to distribute a lot of money every year, as I understood. And they support our community extremely well. And I think this is extremely important because money is always a, a factor. Or others, like universities. We have uh, a professor here. So what are your ideas? We, you are here now to open also your, your mind. So. Thank you for your patience and uh, have a mind-boggling event or to uh, day today. Thank you very much. <laughs>